Viscera Fest, a bold new early access first person shooter from Acid Man Games and Fireplant Games, published by 1C Entertainment. When I first saw images and video of this game, the honest truth, kids, is that I wasn't exactly impressed by the aesthetics. Sure, it reminded me a lot of classic DOS shooters like Chex Quest and Hurl, but the admittedly wild and fun color scheme with the more animated series designs turned me off. And the action I saw in the videos felt super bouncy, fast-paced, a little too chaotic for my tastes. As things have it, a lot of people voiced highly positive opinions of this game, and after interacting with the devs on Twitter, I felt like I needed to give it a shot. What I found mostly matched my expectations. Mostly. Viscera Fest is a fast-paced, bullet-hell FPS that keeps you tense at all times. The gameplay is very bouncy, leaning heavily on bunny hopping as both a means of momentum and dodging incoming fire, as well as a dash mechanic that briefly makes you invulnerable. But the gameplay is also very brutal, punishing to a degree that I haven't personally experienced since a thousand and one spikes, or, well, the ancient gods part one. Imagine an entire game of Doom Eternal Master levels slowly ramping up the difficulty and bastardry with each new area, and you've basically got Viscera Fest. Except you don't. But you kinda do, but not. Let's start with the basics. Viscera Fest is, as mentioned, still in early access, so right now only Chapter 1, Cyber Slaughter, is available. There's a handful of missions with enough content to satisfy paying the 20 or so dollars it's asking for right now, so I'm not going to get into early access economics with this video. We play as Caroline, a human bounty hunter who wants to propose to her alien boyfriend. So at the start of the game, she's on the trail of an alien named Dr. Mortis in order to gather the funds she needs to put a ring on it. Easy, effective setup. But there's one thing that needs mentioning. Even though Caroline says she's human, there's something clearly a little off about her. Now, <laughs> let's get this bloodbath started. And it's breakfast time. I'm feeling waffles with a side of blood. <laughs> Man, I wish I had some body bags. The janitor is gonna kill me. Sit there and bleed. Yeah, Caroline is on the bloodthirsty side, and what's more, the way she regains health is by literally eating body parts, represented by hearts when enemies are jibbed. Depending on the alien you frag, health is worth anywhere from 5 points to 50 points, and believe you me, you're gonna need every ounce of HP you can get your blood-soaked hands on. So, uh, yeah, despite her claims of being a human, she sure does seem like there's something else going on with her physiology. Caroline hops onto the trail of Mortis, and at times during her quest, there's some radio transmissions that she picks up and even interacts with along the way. Radio vocal effects in this game are off the fucking chart. I don't remember the last time I heard distortion effects like that, which not only enhanced the dialogue, but also drew me in further to the game experience. I don't know if I've ever experienced that. Carolyn gets a few warnings from Cromulus to back off of Mortis's tail, but Carolyn gleefully ignores all of this as she careens through the small army of henchmen in her way. You're crazy! Intruder, I'll be frank in saying I don't know why you're here, but the consequences of us failing are beyond your ability to comprehend. Mm, yeah, that's real cute, Null Doc, but save it for someone who actually cares. Just leave, and we'll forget this ever happened. Eh, nah. Fine. Have it your way. Caroline is an amazing character to experience, one of the most fully realized and well-acted quippy FPS protagonists since hell ever. Duke and Caleb got nothing on Caroline, with her pop culture references that somehow don't get stale, her impressive singing voice when she sits still for too long. I've got you under my skin and her borderline bloodlust insanity that's just the most endearingly chaotic thing ever voice actor Jana Polson throws herself into the role delivering each line with a relish to where you can hear all of the fun she's having voicing this character i admit there were times when i wasn't sure how i felt about my experience with the game but then caroline would say something and i cracked a smile and i felt myself drawn in again caroline is without a doubt in my head 
the FPS protagonist of 2021, and you can quote me on that. She even has a moment where she's told not to activate a slipgate because it might destroy the facility that they're all in, and she giggles like that's the coolest damn thing she's ever heard, so she activates it anyway. <laughs> what a true champion. Without going into any spoilers, because oddly enough, there are some intense spoilers in this game that absolutely redefines the experience in a way that caught me completely off guard. One of the later levels in Chapter 1 takes a swift left turn and fully invested me in the game. I was fine with just a bang bang shoot 'em up sci-fi bounty hunter bloodfest, and the devs didn't need to go that hard in surprising me with the background story, but they did. A radical, shocking shift, the kind of which demands to be experienced without knowing what's coming which is why I'm not showing any footage from that level. Needless to say, Caroline doesn't get to Mortis by the end of the first chapter, setting up the stakes for the next two chapters to come, but there's also a huge story looming overhead and behind the scenes, which implies that Caroline might have a little more investment in the story, aside from just money for an engagement ring. It ended up being my favorite aspect of the game as a whole. Also adding to the enjoyment is the soundtrack from Marky Music. Very synth wavy, very heavy in places, up beat, high energy, but it knows when to turn the BPM down into sinister, ominous sonic landscapes. I haven't heard anything from Marky Music up until now, and I'm dying to do a dive into his catalog. Think Andrew Hulschultz's work on Proteus, but with more of a synthwave vibe, and you'll know what you're in for right away. Here, have a listen. Marky Music's soundtrack pairs well with the game's visuals, with their neon-laced retrowave futurism. My partner looked over my shoulder while I was playing and remarked that it looked like I was playing laser tag, and you know what, that's not a bad compliment for what's on display here. Darker shaded walls with a spectrum's worth of colored lighting, glowing buttons and light fixtures, bubbling acid baths and lava flows, all wrapped comfortably in a crispy, pixelated retro graphical engine. There's a lot of purple and pink going on here, which also fits well with the Synthwave soundtrack. Now, despite my initial hesitance at the more animated look of the character and the enemies, the level design and neon sensibilities coupled with the Synthwave soundtrack drew me in and refused to let me go. It doesn't hurt that the level designs are varied and creative and wholly interactive. Caroline can use and or interact with a bevy of objects throughout the game, from lockers to doors to sinks to a buffet platter and on and on, and there promises to be more of this type of build engine interactivity in future chapters of the game. And it's not without a cheeky sense of humor. While certain doors need to be activated through a button press, others need a power source to be destroyed, usually with a punch. And you never know what can be found in the shower room. God, privacy, please! That's what you get for stopping to shower while Caroline is around. Viscera Fest has a hub world as well, which you can access at pretty much any time from the menu. Here, Caroline can hop around and select a chapter to play, and once there, select a level. The hub is pretty sparse at this point, but there's promise in the future for you to trade in the red scullies that you pick up throughout the game here. I have no idea at this point what those things do, other than I just want to collect them all. One interesting note is that after you've played through a level and you choose to replay it from the hub, the scullies you've already collected will be grayed out, so you'll can't just farm the same level over and over for currency. You can still pick them up, but they just don't add to your total. It's a nice touch. This is the kind of shooter where I'm having fun regardless of the gameplay. I was drooling over the expertly crafted presentation on display here, but uh, that gameplay. Ooh. First and foremost, let's establish one thing. It is the policy of the Ranger Report to play first-person shooters on the second highest difficulty setting, or whatever the equivalent of ultra-violence would be, depending on the game. Sometimes that works out, sometimes it doesn't. But on a scale of 1 to 5, I always go in as close to a 4 as possible. Viscera Fest doesn't even have a 1. It goes from 2 to 6. Oh, it tries to warn you, kids. It tries. It tells you, hey, this mode is specifically for this purpose. If you're not ready for it, then don't hop in here. And I'm like... 
row, I did Doom Eternal on Nightmare, including the DLCs. Viscera Fest's difficulty modes are medium, hard, brutal, extreme, and nightmare. No easy difficulty? <laughs> well, all right then, if that's how it is. Brushing this all off as over-the-top swagger, I, of course, picked extreme, because that's the second highest difficulty. And that's what we do around here, right? Nope! I should have listened because holy dick, this game is fucking hard! Are you dead yet? After a few tries, I realized I needed to pump the brakes a touch, and I went down to brutal difficulty. And while much more doable, it was a rough ride throughout. Caroline, despite being a whirlwind force of chaos and destruction, is a very squishy humanoid, and standing still will get her killed quicker than it takes me to read this sentence out loud. Established early on is the idea that Caroline can punch, as well as dash and bunny hop, and that melee, used in combination with gunplay, is the way to make the experience either easier or just plain accomplishable. Which is all well and good, but getting close enough to do melee attacks is a trick in and of itself. I already know that I'm not great at the kind of shooters which demand me to move, jump, dash, run, turn, shoot, move, etc, 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 with reflexes benefiting a younger dad, but Viscera Fest demands this kind of performance in an extra special way. Way. Diving in head first without a plan results in death. Being too cautious results in death. There's a very specific, very fine dance to be done here that the game outright refuses to hold your hand through. Sure, it presents you with the tools to get her done, and it will throw a couple of tips at you in the early phases, but it ain't gonna be easy on you. Quite the opposite. Much like Doom Eternal, Viscera Fest presents the player with a series of rooms filled with monsters and asks you to clear the area before moving on. They're placed like violent chess pieces, ready and waiting to kill you within seconds if you're not careful. And then, even if you are careful, they'll pop up like carnival targets, unload their ammunition on you, and you're forced to reload your game. Clearing a room requires the balance of bursting in with bravado and the delicate grace of a ballet dancer. Much like the aforementioned 1001 Spikes, this is a game of learn, die, retry. Learn the setup of the room or area of the level, die while attempting to make it through, retry with new knowledge. I'm not opposed to gameplay like this. I fucking love 1001 Spikes and Spelunky and Doom Eternal, but Viscera Fest is an especially punishing experience unlike any I've ever endured. At times I found myself cursing it. At times I felt elated when I understood what was being asked of me and I made it through by the skin of my teeth. And more than a couple of times, I got genuinely furious and slammed my fists on my desk and threatened to toss my headphones across the room. I was so fucking pissed by the amount of sheer Tom fuck being thrown at me in ways that demanded perfection to an extent that even taking one hit of damage meant I wasn't going to get through the next fucking fuck God. fucking okay fuck God. Sorry, I was, um, was just having some flashbacks there. Now again, I'd like to remind you kids that I can get behind this kind of experience. There were a couple of things holding me back from actually having fun at times. The save system and the controls. The controls are standard FPS stuff, but they feel a little too weightless. It's a little hard to explain, but let me give it a whirl. One of the difficult aspects of older 2D sprite-based shooters was the weight of the characters. Since they're not true 3D characters with 3D physics, 2D sprites can have a certain papery weightlessness to them that needs to be balanced out by the gameplay. For example, in Doom and Duke Nukem 3D, despite the fact that the characters are all 2D, they don't feel like they move too quickly or weightlessly because there's an element of inertia they need to build up. There's drag to the momentum which keeps the character and the enemies anchored. Viscera Fest doesn't seem to have that sensation. Caroline doesn't build up speed so much as she launches full steam ahead, and then bunny hopping gets faster, and dashing is even fucking faster than that for a brief spurt. Zooming and jumping and dashing without any kind of build up or slowdown made me feel unable to gauge exactly what kind of momentum I actually had. So I was constantly compensating and 
and correcting movement while bullets and lasers and assholes came flying at me from every direction at the exact same time. I imagine this is how a pinball must feel, careening out of control, unable to stop moving, for if it does, it falls into the pit and is no more. For what it's worth, the mid-air controls are Oh, chef's kiss. And in the times when I was not being assaulted from all angles and was able to slow down enough to actually appreciate them, they work really well. But on the whole, movement feels less like I'm running and gunning and more frantically attempting to redirect from dashing too far, not jumping far enough, or moving too soon. There are brief moments when things click and I feel like the controls are working, and then it's back to swearing because I can't believe a jump from a standstill can launch me that far. Controls are one thing. Now I can work around flighty controls if other things click into place. Unfortunately, the other main cause of my frustrations was the safe system, and that cemented my frustration into fury. Now the way it works is thus. The game auto-saves at the beginning of the level, and if you die at any point, you have to start all the way over. However, if you pick up a save beacon, that acts as your new respawn point. You can place the beacon anywhere you want, at any time you want, giving the player full control over when and where they respawn. I ab absolutely just hated this. At first I tried to stretch myself out, push a little further in a level before placing a beacon I just picked up, only to die seconds away from doing so. Then I'd start placing beacons the moment I found them so I wouldn't accidentally fuck myself over, except then I'd really fuck myself over, because I'd end up placing the beacon right before a long slog of an onslaught that I'd have to attempt multiple times, meaning a lot of pitch-perfect combat in order to ensure my survival. And the damning thing about it all is that the save beacon saves the exact instant you put it down. Meaning, as in one case for me, if you put it down as an enemy is charging you, every single time you respawn at the beacon, that same enemy will be charging you again, and you'll have to remember that and dodge them, or you end up dying the moment you reappear. Viscera Fest can hit a slog at points like these, leaving you on edge with each encounter, praying, hoping for another beacon before you take another bullet to the brain and are forced to plow slowly through the same field of enemies over and over. When I played Proteus, I grumbled a bit about the checkpoint system it used, how the way to save was to find the checkpoint gems and activate them. But at least when you died in that game, you immediately reappeared at the checkpoint in the middle of the continuing action and got back into the fray. Not so here. Place the beacon, die, reappear, go through the terror and tension again. What's worse is that the beacons are few and far between. If Viscera Fest had an automatic checkpoint system, rather than manual saves that you had to find and place, I'd be feeling a lot kinder and less frustrated with the procedure. As it stands, the save system prevents the game from feeling like an experience that is simply challenging, and instead transforms it into an objectively punishing experience. And while there's a market for shooters like that, I don't know if it's exactly the kind for me. There's still plenty to like here. The arsenal is beefy, and the sound effects are crunchy, going hand in hand like a couple out for a walk on a beautiful summer day. Of particular note are the two shotguns. The Bunker Buster is a great fucking shotgun. I love the animation for how it pops open and reloads the shells. And the Deus Mortis, the quad-barreled shotgun, is just death. It's literal death in your happy little hands, and I took great pleasure in ripping apart enemies with it. The other weapons fall into the unique but familiar formula, with the Pung Cannon that essentially shoots rockets, which burst on impact with an enemy, or stick to surfaces like proximity mines. The Shredder Pistol and the Dual Shredders work well enough. The Solo Pistol, taking two ammo per shot, and is accurate and deadly. But for some reason, the Dual Shredders trade a faster fire rate for lower damage per shot, for, for some reason that doesn't make sense to me. I've never, ever ever understood games that have SMGs or rapid fire dual pistols, but make it so that they do less damage than say a regular ass pistol. What is the point of that? You're just fucking with me at that point. It's a waste of my goddamn- The plague gun fires a cloud of toxic gas, which prevents enemies from moving while it chips away at their health. Sure, it doesn't do a lot of damage on its own, but it can trap heavier enemies and prevent them from moving while you whip out something else that does even more damage to finish the job. Most of these guns seem designed to set you up to do a little bit of damage to enemies so that you can then close in and punch them to jibs with your fists, which, by the way, have a charge up move if you hold down the right mouse button and can one hit most enemies. I had a decent amount of fun with them, and I wanted to really lean into my shotgun gamer dad mindset, but ammo is scarce 
and the game makes you fight for what you can find. And if you run out before you hit certain tidal waves, well, you're just shit out of luck, kids. You have to get real inventive throughout to keep your ammo in stock. Enemies have a neat variety. Standard issue soldier drones with blaster pistols, heavier soldiers with rapid fire shredders, tanky melee assholes called thunderbirds that bum rush you for a lot of damage, Every enemy in this game does massive amounts of damage, which could be due in part to the difficulty setting, but is probably just the game in action. I did enjoy their designs, in particular the walrus looking heavies rolling around on single tank treads. These guys just look like they're doing the best that they can. There's some inventive stuff here, including some innocent bystanders that you can pulp for bonus health, although the droids with the shields that make them invulnerable can fuck all the way right off. The way to destroy them is to wait until they fire their eye beam at you, at which point they change color and drop their shields for a moment to do so. Get in a shot on them in that moment, but don't get cocky because their shields snap back immediately, so you have to dance, taunt them into attempting to fire at you, make sure your aim is good, and hit them and not let their eye beam hit you because it does 40 points of damage. If you're just having to deal with them solo, they're just a matter of patience, but if you're leaping and dodging other enemies at the same time, it can get ugly real quick if you're not paying attention. At first, I didn't even think I could kill them. I thought they were just obstacle enemies to avoid and leave be while everything else was fraggable. It wasn't until I got to a room that wouldn't let me out until I killed two of these fucking things that I finally discovered how to do so. And the boss fight. Holy fuck, the boss fight. For all the absolute aggravation and white hairs I developed from this fucking thing, the boss fight is honestly a work of wonder. A stationary elder banshee hangs from the ceiling, summoning all matter of traps and devices and deadly attacks while you do your best to whittle down his health bar. And it's a three-stage boss fight. You can see the green, yellow, and red lights beneath the bar. That's three health bars, and each new stage presents new traps and dangers to dodge in faster and deadlier varieties. I think I spent a grand total of an hour. Maybe be an hour and a half, depending on the footage, trying to take this thing down. Not since the Icon of Sin on Nightmare Mode have I had a fucked time as this. Everything here is timing. Dodging, jumping, leaping, the apex and apotheosis of the game's design, both beautifully presented and confoundingly executed, with ammo on small platforms that you need to land on to pick up. It took me some doing. It took me a lot of doing. But that sweet, sweet feeling of victory when I finally killed that bitch was sweeter than anything. Bravo to the devs for this boss fight, which I can't believe I'm saying after nearly putting a dent in my desk out of frustration. Viscera Fest is, without a doubt, a game that I am torn on in the most well, visceral of ways. On one hand, I cannot get enough of the visuals, the sounds, the score, the story, and the Caroline of it all. On the other hand, the difficulty, the save system, and the controls make me want to rip my hair out and chain smoke before I dive back in again. I had moments while playing this where I genuinely considered making this the only video for Viscera Fest, despite it being an early access game with more content to come. I was cursing, sweating, clenching and hating every moment while simultaneously and consciously making the choice to try and come back one more time. And that's the thing. I wanted to give it one more try. I wanted to get back in and show this game I wasn't about to bend over to the brutal difficulty. Ultimately, at the end of it, I did decide to return and review chapters 2 and 3 when they arrive, if only for the sole reason of discovering what the hell is going on with this story. To say that I was surprised and shocked by the twist level, as well as the ending, is an understatement. Weighing everything fairly and evenly, I do feel that Viscera Fest is a good game. I also think it would work better if either the save system were switched to automatic checkpoints or if the difficulty were toned down a couple of notches. But what's here is very well made and actually very good, if not still rough in development and execution. Overall, Viscera Fest gets a 7 out of 10. <sighs> well, kids, I think it's my turn to tell myself to go drink some water. I'm dehydrated as all get out and I probably need a power bar from the calorie depletion. Also, I think I sprained my wrist. So, stay safe stay hydrated, and make sure you floss at least once a day. Your gums will thank you for it. We'll see you next time, kids.